Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. $4,809 silver. Why the debt clock reversed. Let's explore. For those unaware, I have posted a series of videos uh, documenting the U.S. debt clocks um, numbers for silver and is how it relates to not only deficit and spending and also the national debt itself, uh, which we'll review here in a moment, but also just in terms of uh, this number, this massive number that many people mistake for what they think the price of silver should be, or that the U.S. debt clock is sending a message that this is what the price of silver should be per ounce. But in reality, that's not the case. And I try to explain myself um, early on in the video so that people understand. And of course, the people that just comment and don't take the time to watch, well, this is where you need to really listen up. Because never in any of these videos have I said that silver should be $4,809 per ounce. All it is is a ratio. That number is a measure of the amount of year-over-year um, -year increase in the U.S. M2 money supply. And it's divided by the yearly world production of silver. And they are sourcing that information from the Federal Reserve and the USGS. And we're going to take a look and see uh, what this number was at before because in the series that I've done, it actually started back at um, about $841 uh, per ounce when I started tracking this. Um, but it did get over $5,000 and I posted a video talking about it at over $5,000. And actually, if we look back in time, we can see that it actually got up to $5,212. But uh, this number, it pulled back substantially, um, about a $400 decrease. Um, pretty big jump backwards, a pretty big reversal. So we're going to take a look and find out and see if we can come to any conclusion. Um, because there's a lot of data that one has to kind of peruse through to kind of get an answer. And my guess is probably the answer is going to lie in mining supply and how numbers have been reported and what has just been released recently uh, from the Silver Institute and the USGS. Before we go there, we're going to take a look and remind ourselves what we are doing in this country and the fundamentals remain strong. We are completely, uh, continually uh, increasing our national debt and deficit spending. And by the proposals that have been uh, mentioned by the President of the United States, uh, they want to continue that to the tune of about $4 trillion. Um, and that is an, an astronomical number indeed. But uh, this will pull us. We know we're going to hit $30 trillion sooner rather than later. And uh, it is just um, staggering to see these numbers. Uh, it's unsustainable at the level that it's going. It almost doesn't matter at this point for many people. Obviously, to politicians, it doesn't matter because they only talk about the debt when it suits their political agenda. And to me, that is unfortunate. Nonetheless, we can see that the, the debt per citizen and debt per taxpayer is increasing as well uh, with very little revenue to show for per citizen uh, in comparison to just goes to show you where we are at. So therefore... They can continue to increase this monetary supply that you can see here in this section of the chart. Um, and they will continue to do it and press on with the increase in the monetary supply. That means that there is just more uh, of these dollars being digitized or printed um, than there are the silver that is mined year over year to cover it, to back it up. So it got up to... Well, $5,200, and then it scaled back. Why did that happen? Uh, well, the answer may lie in the silver survey that was just released by the Silver Institute, by Metals Focus, 
and we can see here some of the numbers in the mining supply uh, over the past year we saw a, a six percent decrease uh, with a 784.4 million ounces for total uh, from research done by metals focus so obviously a great uh, decrease in fact we haven't seen those low of numbers since 2011 and uh, we saw the silver being mined less than this is a direct result of the pandemic but it's because there has been a pretty great demand for silver in the past year but there are also some people feel like well um there is still maybe they're surprised at the demand at the amount of silver that was produced because even though it was a substantial and notable drop in supply maybe people thought it would drop even more and so the perhaps the uh debt clock people were estimating because that is those numbers are updated more frequently than these reports come out and uh, I don't know where the interim reports and how those things are handled, but nonetheless, the USGS does do interim reports and the like, but their numbers, which is really where this is quoted from, is the numbers and the difference in production here that we see that not only in the United States, it actually has increased in the U.S. And perhaps that was part of what has driven uh, them to uh, revise those numbers back since it increased in the United States. But overall, around the world, again, we saw a mine, uh, global silver mine production decrease by 6%. And so therefore, we can see 25,000 tons is the, is the estimated uh, um, mining figure, production figure here. And so therefore how that is calculated or what have you um is it a matter of of how this supply is added to the reserves that we're seeing which increased by some standards in fact you've heard me cover this and how the comex has seen an increase and this report actually shows that um somewhere down here an increase in the comex stocks there it is comex versus the london LBMA vaults a great increase um, since last year is does that account for it does it include uh, this this number is that telling us the year-over-year -year, um, increase in the uh, world production of silver added to existing stocks uh, I don't know how they're calculating those numbers I would by reading this explanation, it seems to make the most sense that it's just the yearly production of silver period, not necessarily adding to reserves or stocks out there, but could be wrong about that. But it could be since these reports were released um, uh, very soon, uh, around the same time that the revision was take, took place with a downgrade in the amount of dollars printed per silver mined or produced in a, in uh, over the past year or, or quarter and maybe that's just it maybe we're looking into to see this might give us a hint of the demand that we're seeing forecast for 2021 and there has been talk about silver increasing uh, fairly greatly silver production increasing as the things open up from the pandemic and it could be that those numbers being added are is a floating calendar in other words that floating calendar may mean that uh, measures are taken from estimates and reports that have come into the USGS um, from you know January to December or from February to the to January or February to March and it floats each by each quarter and however uh, that is reported and it could be that we, since we've seen a great um, demand and an increase uh, potentially of mining um, for this year forecast and we're real realize that that could be of what is affecting these numbers so they've revised them back down a bit I think we don't really know the exact reason but those could be potential reasons why we saw a such a huge reversal um, as of late with the dollar to silver ratio 
What is the overall message of this, though? Um, and that is that compared to 1913, when the dollar to silver ratio was $2.64 per ounce, um, even that really was still too high because um, any silver circulating at the time in the forms of nickels, I mean, in the form of dimes, quarters and half dollars, well, that would amount to about, you know, 0.72 ounces um, of, of silver for a dollar. And so, the, you know, it still was greatly inflated back then. So there's things to, to take into account here when adjusted for inflation to where these numbers take for a grain of salt. But nonetheless, the overall thing here to recognize and realize is that, you know, since 1913, when this started, um, there's a lot more dollars printed than there is the silver to back it up. Not that silver backs up our dollars uh, because we're not on a silver standard. We're not on a bimetallic standard anymore. And uh, so to me, $4,809 is still a scary number to think about because it's diluting our our money supply. And when you dilute the money supply, that means that the value of those dollars are going down, you know, and that's just it. But they're being utilized and transferred. The dollar is a global reserve currency. And as recognized by Gresham's Law here, we know it. Bad money drives out good money. Well, <laughs> I think these numbers should send a message to all of us that we should take the good money to drive out the bad money. That's why we stack silver and we do it because it preserves our wealth through the course of a long period of time, depending on how we buy utilizing what I refer to as smart dollar cost averaging, buying more silver when it's priced lower and less silver when it's priced higher, both in terms of premiums and spot price. So there you have it. So I hope this helped explain it. You know, we didn't really answer the question as far as to why the debt clock reversed, but we might have some indications as to why that had occurred, um, if how they source this information is true. But again, there's a lot of complexities in how these numbers are derived and reported in the time frame. So there's a lot of questions asked just in as to how this data are, are taken into account and utilized to derive these numbers. So I hope you found this video insightful if you want to be apprised of the newest video when it drops um, i would encourage you to hit the notification bell so that you can be let known immediately when a new video is launched um, otherwise i want to encourage you to please rate this video it does help the engagement sends the algorithm so that it uh, gets recognized on the platform share this video upon many other um, social media platforms out there comment and subscribe a multitude of gratitude to you all